Um, I remember um, I've always had a thing for round forms, and so bottles obviously fit into that category. I remember um, in night. Oh, I meant to bring. I meant to bring some of my bottles. So well, um, I remember in 1969, my first ceramics class. I wanted to make one, and I couldn't mm. because I mean my, the teacher was an idiot. But <laughs> well, no, no, he was a really good potter, good artist, but he was a terrible teacher. Wow. We've all had those, right? Yes, yeah. They know their subject, but they're useless. Yeah. You know. Right. So anyway, and I remember my very first one. And I was so proud of it. And now I look back on that thing, it's like, holy crap, what a piece of boo boo. Um, and it took me a long time to figure these out. And even now, um, the bottles I'm going to be making tonight, I'm, going to, I'm not, I'm not going to go for form, it's just about technique. But if I'm making bottles at home, it, I'm not, it's a challenge. I'm working my ass off trying to get it thin enough, trying to get the clay up and get that neck in. But there are some, some, they're not tricks, but there are some uh, methods that will really help all of you if, with bottles. And do yourself a favor. Don't start off with a 25-pound bottle. <laughs> make, okay. a, make a two-pound bottle. Get a feel for it. What does it feel like to bring that neck in? Try blowing it out. Oh, it collapses. Well, you only lost a pound and a half or two pounds. So start off small until you get a feel for these techniques. So first, I'm going to show you what not to do and what most uh, beginners do wrong. Also, um, it's a good idea not to use B-Mix um, unless it has sand in it. Uh, just because clay without sand is less forgiving. It's mm -hmm. going to collapse more easily. What are you using now? Hmm? What are you using? What is that? B-Mix. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Sand and B-Mix? Oh, sand and B-Mix? No, it has no, no, it has no sand. Yeah, anything with sand is easier. Mm. Oh, I thought it was. No, it's just no Sarah, the, everybody is out of all this stuff. I don't know how you would be out of sand, but... <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Are, are they, is, the is our, it's a supply chain thing. I know it is, yeah. but... You know. And especially uh, prepared silica, obviously silica sand. But yeah, you can buy, I used to buy it in a 50 pound bag, but you can't get it now. Um, I wonder where it comes from. That's a fair question. What's interesting about the stuff that you buy is it's pretty uniform. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, it's all, yeah, it Same looks thing. very uniform in color. Or beach sand, which would probably work, not so much. They could do grog, which is clay that they bisque fire and then ground back up, but it, it's a very different feel. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, silica it has smooth edges, grog has rough edges, so it's just a very different feel. You feel it. Silica is just like very, very fine beach sand. And it comes in different meshes, different sizes. So it could be as like fine beach sand, it could be coarse. Okay, so what do beginners do wrong? Can I make you a list? <laughs> what they do, what they do is they say, okay, I want to make a bottle. But they're so used to making a cylinder of a particular shape. Make a bottle, Bill. So they blow it out, and then they say, "Oh, I'm for a neck." <laughs> yeah. All sounds pretty logical to me so far. <laughs> okay, so it's not a neck; it's a throat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, and so the more I try to bring this in, the more it's just going to collapse, right? Okay. So don't do that. As have I. I would have thought that was the way to do it, obviously.
it's interesting. This clay, I, I throw this all the time with sand, and without sand, it's, it's very different. A lot more slip. I'm going to make up some small bottles, but the techniques don't change, except for maybe a couple, and I'll demonstrate those. <coughs> you notice every time I come, I make a pull, I set that lip. I don't care what you're making. If it's a bowl, a plate, I don't care. I want that thick. <laughs> and I, I don't see any reason for it to ever get thin unless you want it thin at the end. This stabilizes the entire cylinder. Beginners do this, and they and they pinch that off, and it gets really thin, and then the, the top starts doing this, and then the bottom starts doing this. So if you keep this stabilized, some of my students say, your rims are so thick, until I finish the piece. At the very end, I can go and make it whatever I want. You get to the top, you stop. I, did, I never even touched that. And it stays as thick as I want it. Okay, so if you're going to make a bottle, you have to make a cylinder that's significantly taller than it is wide. Mm -hmm. You can't make a bowl into a bottle. So I'm going to make a little cylinder here. Sometimes I make these too narrow to get my fat hand in. Okay. So there's my cylinder. And you see how even this is a little wide, not as tall as I would like, but it's fine. But you notice that this is still really thick. And so that when I bring it in now, when I collar it in, I've got some play to move. It's not, you know how you've done this, the clay starts to buckle on you, mm -hmm. it's getting too thin. All right, a couple of bottle tricks. You have to sort of understand what you're trying to do. What you're not trying to do is you're not trying to, as I demonstrated with the first one, you're not trying to take that cylinder and bring that neck in. If you do, what's going to happen? It's going to start to come down on you. I mean, not always, but some, most of the time. So what you want to do is, you, there's your cylinder, you want to collapse that whole top in on itself. And that really is one of the keys. If you think about this, it's not going to work. If you think about this, well, it's stable. It's going to work. It's holding itself up. Now, obviously, there's variations on that. Um, another thing, I'm getting ahead of myself, but... Um, and by, as parting gifts for everybody, I brought everybody a credit card if you don't have one of my credit cards. Um, but it's, oh, goody, it's, where can we charge stuff? Yeah, not, hey, go to Starbucks, knock yourself out. Um, but I really suggest that you learn to shape on the outside with a credit card. Now, you can use a metal rib, but I think they're dangerous. I've cut myself with them. These, you're not going to hurt yourself. But what this does, it compacts the outside, the clay molecules of the, of the walls of the pot. And it also takes moisture out of it. So you're going to be able, the clay is going to be drier and stronger as opposed to wetter and saggier. Okay? You also want to think about dividing the pot into halves or thirds. Certainly no less than thirds. So I, if, I could only have my mirror, which is probably a good thing. But that's about half, something in there. So if you could, this can be the body and this can be the neck. In other words, I'm taking this model, that's out, and but this whole top section is going to be the neck. I'm going to bring it in, or you can do a two thirds, one third. Two thirds is probably probably about there. I'm just guessing, but that's yeah, that's something like that. So here's what I can do. On the bottom, actually, I think I'm going to keep this. Over.
not my mirror, I can't see my tools. Um, okay, so I'm going to, I'm just having a weird deja vu that I've done this before for you guys. Wow. I'm sure I have, wow. but it's just like. Okay. <laughs> oh, you are all old enough to know who Rod Serling is, so you know oh, what yeah. I'm talking about. I'm having one of those moments. <laughs> Now, when you, especially if you're just learning, don't get greedy. I mean, don't make one of those. They're the the real wound ones, round wound ones, round <laughs> ones. I'll call it called moon jars. No, so, God. Yeah, if you, this is the second you, time this came Yeah, out. yeah. And, and um, uh, Korean potters are famous for them. Um, they're beautiful. I mean, and it, a sphere is the hardest shape to make, pure and simple, just because of gravity. Uh, and it's remarkable. But don't, you give yourself a break. Another thing you need to remember is that if this doesn't look very blown out when you make it, remember when you trim it, you're going to bring that bottom in. And you, okay, watch my hand. So this is my pot. Well, if I do this, you can visually, I think you can see how that lifts that form, makes it a little bit lighter, a little more bulbous. So that's what we're talking about. Now, I allowed this to get wide with my fat hands, but because I've got plenty of clay to play with here, I can bring this in. Now, this is called collaring, and it basically it's middle fingers and thumbs. There's other techniques, but that's what most people use. And so, the problem that you're going to have in terms of weakness, while it can be in the body down here, it's usually going to be at the shoulder where that neck starts to come in. This is the weak spot. So you just have to take your time and be careful. What is that doing? What is that doing? Oh, it's a, you've, heard, you've heard of a hot dog and a stick? <laughs> Take a guess. Sponge and water out. Yeah. 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 Sponge and a stick. The yeah. There's there's the bottom, there's variations and you can make your own. Now I'm going to get it a little bit technical in just a second. But I love it when you talk to <laughs> You reach a point where you can no longer co collar it or choke it. I've got plenty of clay here, but it looks like I'm going, to, I'm going to have a problem with this. I'm not, but now I've got to change my hand position a little bit. So as I, when you collar or bring anything in like that, you're thickening the walls. So that means I've got more clay to play with now. It was now thicker than it was. So now I can go back with this. Now it's very common with bottles, it's really common, for the top to end up doing this. So if it happens, it's not because you're evil. <laughs> okay, now we're going to change hand position slightly. Um, I, I haven't seen this much on YouTube, I don't know why. Um, it's one of the few things I got out of my first ceramic class. But it's, it's a six point, I, I've seen it called the claw, but I know a lot of things that are called the claw in, in throwing. But I'm going to con now instead of doing this, this isn't going to work. But I've co got contact with my thumbs, this, and the sides of my middle fingers. So it's here, here, and here. So you can see thumbs are here, check. Then the sides of my middle fingers are here, and then my index fingers are there. And it's this. And you really have more. Con this is much, uh, much more of a fine motor control position than this. When I do this, I'm trying to teach myself or remind myself as I say, say all this stuff. I never start right here. I always start like this, so I'm actually sort of feeling the form. 
So I'm not squeezing, I'm not squeezing, I'm not squeezing, and now I'm starting to squeeze. But I'm making sure that it's, it's a continuous uh, line with my hand. Normally, as I mentioned previously, I would be throwing with a, uh, a mirror for the shape, but I, I was gonna, I meant to bring mine tonight, but I realized that it would, it would be in your way. So, anyway. So the same thing's happened again. I brought it in, and now it's thicker. Okay, let's take advantage of that. Matthew Kelly Potter, that I, one of the guys that I really admire, he talks about when he makes a bottle and he finishes the bottle and he hasn't had to cut that lip off, it's like, yeah! <laughs> Talks well. So, at this point, what can I do to shape it? And I, if the shape's not great, I, well, it's not great. I do apologize, but I can't really see it. I'm just used to doing this. But I can reach my finger in there and make sure that that curve is working for me. So I still can shape it a little bit. So now this won't work anymore. So now I'm into this. Feel the curve. And in you go. I should have given myself a little more play to do this. Does anybody have a needle tool? I, I couldn't find one of the... You notice I'm constantly going back with that credit card. Thank you, dear. Getting rid of the water. With porcelain especially, especially Coleman porcelain, um, if you use water, you, it will actually, er you can see it erode the clay as it goes down. I mean, it's, I love the clay. It's my favorite clay, but it's not very forgiving. husband would be very happy to see me using my credit card here instead of at the store. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, this is not what I wanted, but I'm trying to... So, let's say for the sake of argument that we're happy with this. So we're you, impressed. You cut it off, but you're not done with that rim. There's a trick. So let's say for the sake of argument, well, I'm done. I'm not, but to say that I am. Before you start to finish this or take it off, in fact, especially if this is a little, I'll do something like that. Okay, there you go. This shape was really big in the 70s and 80s. They called them weed pots, <laughs> little straw flowers. <laughs> I'm not old. I'm not. <laughs> Um, cut this, cut it off at an angle, watch. What this does, it gives the lip the illusion of being, of the whole pot being really thin. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's a totally different look, isn't it? Yeah. Now it becomes a little more graceful. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Okay, well, what happens if you didn't follow my directions? Come on. And you got to this point. And damn, you just, you got nothing. You got nothing, right? What do you do? Um, I got this from Ceramics Monthly a long, long time ago. And I've used it now almost at least half the time, half the bottle I make, or I made. Um, and it's, it's it, this is not a beginning trick, but something that's not hard to learn. It's pretty basic. You do this. So somehow I've got to get clay from here to here, right? All right. But if I do this, if I get it too thin, it's going to collapse right here, right? Mm -hmm. you with me? Okay. So what I'm going to do is this. I put I, your middle finger goes in. And so my middle finger is supporting all of this. Okay? I can feel it. I'm right there. And I'm going to push against that middle finger, but I'm not going to move the middle finger. So normally when you lift, you do something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to do this. And this, th this finger is going to support that inside um, shape where it's likely to, to uh, <coughs> collapse. So I can put this and I can go and just keep working until you have enough so how thick do you think the wall is now um -hmm. How thick do you think your wall inside is? There, it, it's probably at least maybe five sixteenths. It's pretty thick. I'm making no effort to make it thin because I don't want it to collapse in the middle of the demo. So I could continue to work this, but you can see now I've got some play to play with. Mm -hmm. I apologize for the wobble, but you get the idea. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. right. No. That's bigger. <laughs> Another thing, and I've covered this in previous um, demonstrations, but you're right, I can get it semi-controlled pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I'm pushing pretty hard, so that's a lot of hand strength. But I spend, I do a lot of, I'm very efficient at coning, because I'm just not as strong as I used to be. I used to be able to muscle this, I can't do it anymore. So, I mean, I'm, I'm here, I'm using my body, I'm pulling back, so I'm using a lot of very efficient Uh, force just to bring it up into a cone and this is because I'm doing this it's just not it's not that hard to do and once I've done this once or twice then I pretty much have it under control they never teach this anymore but coning was a very very old way of centering they just coned it till it was centered <coughs> I've got plenty. Um, I, mine are nylon. But how do you get yeah, them? And, and they're they're better than these. They'll still chew up your hands oh. if you hit them. They'll chew up your hands, but they won't chew up the bats. Oh. The nylon ones, the pins wear out before the bat hole does, so the bat a new bat stays tight longer. Okay. That's the theory.